We have a special one today. Uh, today we're making a mallet for a really good new friend of mine named Vlad. Now, if you spend any time in the woodworking subreddit in the last month or two, you've met Vlad. Hey Vlad, what are we doing? Away. Gotta put the chickens away. All right, let's put them away. Put them to bed tonight. Hey, who built this chicken coop, Vlad? <laughs> who built it? <laughs> we did it together. <laughs> yeah. Vlad is a woodworker who lives in the Ukraine who was born with Apert syndrome, uh, which is a genetic disorder. And as a lot of you know, at the beginning of the year, we started the Cats Moses Woodworkers with Disabilities Fund. And with the coronavirus, we haven't been able to do as much as I wanted, but our goal is to use the fund to help woodworkers with disabilities grow their craft and become better at woodworking and get the things they need to flourish. Now, about a month ago, I reached out to Vlad's dad, Jed Johnson, who runs a nonprofit called Wide Awake International. They're from Oregon, but they moved to the Ukraine and they're helping move kids with disabilities out of institutions and putting them with family so that they can flourish and live a life full of dignity and love. Sorry, I'm getting choked up just talking about it. Ah, it's really cool what he's doing. And I really look up to Jed and Vlad and what they've done. And so I reached out and said, I wanna, I wanna do something. I wanna send you guys uh, everything I can to help you share your journey and help grow your craft. So we've put together a massive package in conjunction with Tay Tools, Bits and Bits, Suisse and Saws, my three long, long time sponsors. Uh, the Cats Moses Disabled Woodworkers Fund is sending Vlad a Canon 70D with five lenses, some tripods, some lights, microphones, so he can help uh, share his journey, something he loves to do. And today I'm gonna show you how I made this amazing mallet that's actually specially designed to help Vlad with his hands. He has a tough time holding onto stuff, so we created a pummel that is counterweighted so that he can hold it with two hands while Jed holds chisels for him. And Vlad's just now getting into joinery, so this is something that's really gonna help his journey. We engraved his name in it so he can show it off with pride. Uh, and this is, this is something that's really exciting. What you see in front of you uh, is just some of the things we're sending. We have a huge, massive package going out to the Ukraine next week. Bits and Bits has donated a bunch of router bits. Tay Tools is donating jigs and work holding uh, things. We've got marking knives with really big handles so Vlad can grip it tightly. Uh, some of the new CMT Forstner bits that uh, we had in the last video. We've got t-shirts, uh, Cats Moses Woodworking t-shirts, dovetail jigs, stop blocks, Suisan saws going out. Uh, and basically, we just are, are sending this stuff to Vlad so he can continue to share his journey and inspire us all. So uh, let's get into the build. And uh, if you want to learn about how you can help out Jed's charity, uh, getting kids out of institutions in the Ukraine uh, and, and placing them with families, as well as the Cats Moses Woodworkers with Disabilities Fund, that'll be linked down below in the description and pinned comments. So. Let's get to making this mallet. Doesn't this look cool? So obviously I want this mallet to be super special and I also want it to be really, really heavy. So I've dug deep into my stash and I found a piece of Madagascar ebony. I mean, this probably weighs 20 pounds, just this piece of wood and a piece of bog oak. Now we're, this is gonna be the main head. I'm gonna veneer it with the ebony. The handle will be ebony as well. We're gonna make a pummel because with Vlad's grip, he needs something to rest his hand against so that the mallet doesn't slip out of his hand. And we're going to, rough cut these up. I, I'm gonna put a small angle in the two pieces of the mallet you'll see here in a second and veneer them on either side with the ebony. And that's gonna create a shape for our handle to go in and get a wedge, which will make it very easy to secure it with a wedge and some glue. So let's get these cut up. We're gonna glue up the head and start shaping the handle. So as you saw, we did some resawing with the table saw. Be careful with that, but I like to go till it's almost all the way through and then I just snap it there at the end and I feel that's a pretty safe way to do it. But you don't wanna take huge passes all at once. You wanna work your way up to that middle line. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is cut this piece at an angle. Now, the reason I resawed the oak was 
I want the mallet to be wider, but I want to be able to not have a gigantic tenon because that would be a weird shaped handle. It'd be tough to cut. So what we're going to do now is cut this piece at a very slight angle. Uh, this is probably way exaggerated. So I marked off the middle. We're going, going to leave a one inch opening for the tenon. It'll probably come up to maybe one and an eighth. So I'll just tilt my saw blade like a degree. I'm going to go ahead and cut both these pieces using these lines as a starting point for the inside of my saw blade. So I'll make sure the saw blade's completely on the inside of the line. Just a very small amount. I'm gonna use my miter gauge with a block on the back for safety. And we're gonna go ahead and cut these and then glue up this sandwich and start working on shaping the handle. All right, so now we're gonna start cutting our tenon. I've taken a measurement from the width of the mallet head. We're gonna get that first, and then we're gonna work on our front to back direction second. And then once it fits, we'll be able to start shaping our handle. All right, so now it's time to start shaping our handle. And like I always say on here, we don't hide our mistakes. We talk about them. I forgot to set the angle back when I was using the data. So I have these weird steps in my tenon, but it's not gonna matter. And honestly, it's gonna let glue get around in there. It's all gonna be hidden, but it was kind of funny. I was like, why does that look like a weird old Japanese palace for some reason, all those tiered, I digress. So. What I was thinking originally was I was gonna screw a pummel on the end of this, but what I think we can do that's gonna look really neat is put two stops on the router table. I'm gonna use the Cat's Moses stop block and so I can go back and forth with that. Well, you only go one direction on the router, but so that it'll stop leaving big these big chunks at the end and we'll round those over in a different way, uh, maybe on the sander or something. I'm gonna try that first. I'm gonna mark my center just in case that doesn't work and I can run my round over all the way through and then we'll add a pummel down the road. But I'm gonna progressively step up larger and larger round over bits till we dial in a fit I like. So let's get this done here on the router. Okay, so we've got our mallet head done. I did a little bit of cleanup. One of the things that's gonna be really cool for Vlad is because of the weight and like density of this wood, the pummel on this thing adds like a pendulum weight to it. So he'll be able to swing it a lot better. That was kind of a fringe benefit I wasn't expecting. Uh, I took a screw, screwed it into the hole for the pummel, uh, chopped off the head. We're gonna chuck that up in the drill and start sanding with the 3M Cubitron. If you haven't checked out that video, amazing sandpaper. We're going to epoxy some leather on, and then we're gonna do the final touches. And one of the great things about epoxying leather on, here's a mallet I made like five years ago, and I did the same thing. I put leather on there and then you can chamfer it after the fact. So you can get those really cool crisp edges. It has the fringe benefit of cleaning up the leather. It looks super cool. And for a wood joiner's mallet, leather is uh, a great addition because it just adds that little bit of cushion that 
kind of adds life to your chisels and your mallet face. We're then going to cut a slit for the wedge, which I have here made out of the bog oak, uh, and it'll add kind of a cool contrast in there. And then we're gonna start putting this thing together. Oh, we're gonna engrave it for Vlad. We're gonna put his name in there. And that's why I made these so thin in this little ice cream sandwich of a mallet head. So that way, when we engrave through, uh, it will show the bog oak, which will create a really cool color contrast in the engraving. Uh, so let's get to finishing this thing up. Man, that just came out incredible. And Vlad, I know you're watching this. I just wanna say, bud, you are one of the most inspiring people I've ever seen and your woodworking is amazing. And just keep it up, bud. You really, you inspire a lot of people and I hope you know that and uh, what you do is incredible. Guys, thanks for watching this. Just, uh, I'm so happy about this. And make sure you go down and check out those links to uh, Jed, who's Vlad's dad, his charity. What they're, the work they're doing is absolutely incredible. Um, if you wanna help out too, you can donate to the Cats Moses Woodworkers with Disability Fund. That'll be linked down below as well. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day.